everyone! Welcome back to another video. I had the brilliant idea to try designing some characters that are essentially the embodiment of the six Dungeons & Dragons ability score stats. Now, I'm gonna assume you have like a basic understanding of what Dungeons & Dragons is since it's been really popular lately, what with like Stranger Things and like 10 different Dungeons & Dragons podcasts all over the place. But basically, it's a role-playing game and in it there are these six ability scores. They are Strength, Dexterity, Constitution, Intelligence, Wisdom, and Charisma. These ability scores basically kind of define like how your character interacts with the world and like what they're good at, and you use them f throughout the game for a whole variety of things. So I figured it'd be fun to try and design some characters based off of these stats. See how much I could push a character into that kind of stat. So without further ado, let's get into this. Let's hop into the first character design, which is the embodiment of strength. Now, when I think about strength, a few things come to mind. Emotional strength, durability, and yes, physical strength. But since this is specifically based off of the Dungeons & Dragons definition, I chose to go with pure physical strength for this character. I figured the best way to embody this trait would be to base her major character traits in strength, so I made her a half-orc barbarian. Half-orcs naturally have a plus two bonus to their strength score, and barbarians are a class centered around strength. Now, I considered making her a dragonborn, which, for those of you out of the know, they're essentially just dragon people, since they also have a natural plus two strength buff, but I felt like half-orcs are more associated with, like, pure strength, and I kind of wanted to draw an orc. <laughs> Another aspect of ability scores is that they all have slightly more niche abilities that they affect. Strength has exactly one, which is athletics. That doesn't give me a lot to work with here, but I incorporated most into her body type. She's muscular and fit, with a slightly heavier frame that implies that when she hits, she'll be hitting hard. Her clothing is lined with a lot of fur, partially because that's a common design in half-orcs, but also because it's similar to the thing some animals do where they try to puff up to appear like bigger and stronger. I gave her an axe for a weapon, because axes kind of seem like they're really strong and heavy. Her axe in particular is a little rough too, with a handle that looks like she just kind of ripped it off of a tree a notched blade that might have chipped off in battle. She also has a few reminders of the battle she's fought, scars across her eye and on her bicep, as well as a bag of skulls of enemies past. I felt like her flaunting those would come off as rather intimidating and strong, like, I fought all these guys and I won! <laughs> she also has a few flecks of fresh blood from her latest battle, because you bet she's still winning. <laughs> On to the next design, the Embodiment of Dexterity. This character is an elf rogue. Elves naturally have a plus two bonus to dexterity, although so do halflings. Honestly, the only reason I chose an elf over a halfling was because I really wanted to draw an elf. <laughs> Rogues are, of course, a class centered around dexterity, and for good reason. Some abilities associated with dexterity include acrobatics, sleight of hand, and stealth, all of which are used often by rogues. To complement the stealthy aspects of dexterity, I gave them dark clothing and a cloak that helps them blend into the shadows, or even disguise themselves as someone unnoticeable to stealthily infiltrate places. Most of their clothing is also less flowy, so they can be more nimble. They also don't carry much, just a small bag, some riches they nabbed with their heightened sleight of hand skills, and an expensive looking dagger they likely got the same way. This helps them travel light and move faster. I also added rubber, or fantasy rubber if that's not a thing in game, to the soles of their shoes so their footsteps are quieter. One thing I also wanted to include, but couldn't really demonstrate through just their design, is that they're gender fluid. They switch between using he, she, and they pronouns, and due to their experience in disguise, are very good at presenting as different genders. Next up is our embodiment of Constitution. She's a dwarf artificer. Dwarves, of course, have a natural plus two bonus to Constitution, and artificers are class centered around the trait. You may be beginning to see a pattern here. <laughs> I struggled some with picking her class, as none of the more basic classes use Constitution as a main ability, 
In the end, though, I realized that some elements of the Artificer class could contribute to a constitution design pretty nicely. Artificers do a lot of engineering, and depending on the path you choose, a little alchemy as well. Since constitution is more or less the measure of one's ability to survive and endure, I figured a kind of scientist experimenting on herself, occasionally going awry, would be fitting. I also incorporated the engineering portion into a prosthetic leg, made by herself of course, and another indicator that she's good at enduring. She also has a pint of ale since, besides it being a staple of dwarf culture, one of the fun things constitution is often ruled for is one's resistance to alcohol and other poisons. And a little story time here, a particularly memorable character of mine once rolled a 1 <laughs> and was a lightweight for the entire game, so <laughs> that was pretty fun. Constitution's also a little bit of a weird trait because it doesn't actually have any other abilities associated with it, which is something you would have expected me to know since I played this game since I was a kid, but nope. I learned that when I looked it up for this uh for this project. So <laughs> What Constitution does contribute to is your health stat, which is very important uh, cuz you need that to live. <laughs> So, basically, the more constitution you have, the more health, and the less likely you are to die. <laughs> this is pretty much incorporated into our dwarf through her ability to endure stuff, so not, a not much was added from that. Other than that, she has hardy gloves to protect her from chemicals, overall-ish looking clothes meant to get work done in, and glasses to help with her farsightedness and her ability to see her work up close. She also has a beard because I'm really fond of the lore of dwarves of any gender being more hairy and growing beards and hey, we need some more bearded ladies in this world. Moving on to intelligence, we have a gnome wizard. Keeping up with our pattern, gnomes have a plus two bonus to intelligence and of course the wizard class is centered around intelligence. These are actually the only two like really basic races and classes that focus on intelligence, so the choice for them was like super easy. <laughs> and of course it doesn't help that I'm usually very indecisive with these things, <laughs> all the other ones took a little bit longer. Now, one of the most infamous parables of Dungeons and Dragons is the difference between intelligence and wisdom since at first they appear to be synonyms. Once you learn it though, it's pretty easy. You can use the tomato metaphor, yes, that's a thing, <laughs> and remember that intelligence is knowing a tomato is a fruit, while wisdom is knowing it wouldn't be a good addition to a fruit salad. Or you can simply remember that intelligence is book smarts, while wisdom is street smarts! <laughs> so our gnome here is working with book smarts. Wizards also typically record their spells in a spell book, which is quite fitting. Naturally a druid with a book in hand, casting a spell from it. He also holds a few scrolls, and a bag full of spellcasting ingredients. Otherwise, he just has some comfy basic blue robes. The abilities associated with intelligence include arcana, history, nature, investigation, and religion. All of these, like, make sense to be connected with intelligence, but on their own they almost seem a little random. I managed to include the arcana by showing this guy's spell knowledge, but... A lot of the other traits are hard to represent since they're usually shown by like investigating something or someone or already knowing it. With how straightforward the character was to conceptualize, I didn't end up with too many tiny details. Next up, we've got the Embodiment of Wisdom, a human druid. Surprisingly breaking up our pattern here, humans actually don't have a plus two bonus to wisdom. Instead, they have a plus one bonus to every ability score. Now, I technically could have picked a race that does have a plus two bonus, the Furbolg, a race that is essentially a giant, but I wanted to stick to the more well-known Dungeons and Dragons races, and I figured picking a race with a bonus to all abilities would be a smart choice someone with more wisdom might make. As for classes, the Cleric is also a wisdom-focused class, but I chose to go with the Druid as they're very tied to nature, and I feel as though nature teaches some valuable life lessons, and also people with more wisdom are more keen to respect the planet. The traits associated with wisdom also tend to fall into nature-related categories too. Animal handling, insight, medicine, perception, and survival. As aforementioned, wisdom is all about street smarts and learning from life. Because of this, I made him older, although compared to the lifespans of some other races, he's not really anything unordinary. However, he's definitely learned from his years alive as a human. 
His clothing is mostly fitted to the typical style of a druid, although I did include a bit of symbolism in his staff. At the tip, it cuts off, revealing tree rings which tie into the nature theme, but also represent age. I kind of wish I made it a little bit more obvious, but oh well. Moving on to the final trait, the Embodiment of Charisma. This is probably my favorite ability score, because you use it for the most important part of the game, flirting with the enemy. <laughs> I've had plenty of fun with that, at one point netting my character a beautiful bear girlfriend. She even had an axe! Anyway, our character here is a tiefling bard. Tieflings have a natural plus two bonus to charisma, and bards are a charisma-centered class. There are actually quite a few races with charisma bonuses. Half-elves and Asimars, the angels to tieflings demons, both have the same plus two bonus, for instance. However, I chose to go with a tiefling since demonic traits are often seen as more alluring, <laughs> if you will. Plus, horns, claws, sharp teeth. I know y'all like that kind of stuff, you can't deny it. Tieflings also come in a variety of skin tones, and I decided to make this one purple, because it is objectively the best color. Look, purple isn't even my favorite color, and I just know that it's the best. Now, you may have heard about bards and their affinity for flirting with everything that moves and generally dismantling the dungeon master's plans. Their main method of combat is music, something that I think is just a little bit more charismatic than the basic magic that floods the world Dungeons and Dragons and that is used by the other two charisma-based classes, the Sorcerer and Warlock. Bards typically pick a single instrument to fight with, but are often proficient in multiple. Our tiefling here is proficient in the guitar. After all, it's the chosen instrument of all hipsters who want to look cool. No shade to guitar players, you are all indeed very cool. They are also proficient in the flute, which is attached to their belt, and the violin, which I wanted to include, but wasn't sure how to fit three musical instruments on one character, so uh, just the guitar and flute for now. Charisma is associated with the abilities of deception, intimidation, performance, and persuasion. Now, performance and intimidation is already shown through their musical talent, but to include a little nod to the deception and persuasion side of things, I gave them a small bag of coins that they've swindled out of some poor dazed fellow who failed their saving throw. As for their outfit, I gave them a low-cut shirt exposing their bare chest, since people seem to like that for some reason. Also rolled up sleeves, since I guess people also like forearms? I don't know man, I just work here. Alright, so there you have it! Those are the six Dungeons & Dragons ability scores personified into characters. Let me know which one was your favorite, or if you have any wild Dungeons & Dragons stories from your own campaigns that you'd like to share down in the comments. Thank you all for watching, and I hope you all have a wonderful day. Wait! Before you guys click off, I wanted to take a few seconds to promote my newly made Patreon! You can find me at CelesteEtc or follow the link in the description. I'll be posting secret behind-the-scenes content there, as well as work in progresses for upcoming videos. I've already posted some concept art, storyboards, and other sketches for the videos that already exist on this channel. And a storyboard for an upcoming animation that I haven't released yet! So check it out! Right now there's only one tier that's $5 a month, but I hope to refine it a bit more in the future and include a few more benefits for everyone. If you do choose to support me, you have my eternal gratitude. And if not, no pressure. I'm just happy to have you all watching my videos. Thank you all so much. Okay, bye now.